This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is the Sam Maxwell Customs Delara carbon fiber wheel for the direct drive wheels that are out there. Now, if you've been part of the direct drive rage and you own one or you want one, one thing you need to know is pretty much every direct drive wheel out there comes as a motor only and you're gonna then need to equip it with your own wheel, mod, rim, whatever you wanna call it. So today, this is one of those such rims. This is built to really go on the end of any adapter, but primarily built to go on a motor that's gonna cost you over $1,000 to begin with. Now this wheel in particular is custom made by Sam Maxwell Customs. He does have a variety of different wheels already available, more of the over-the-counter stock ones. They're very pricey, but they're very high-end wheels using Momo, using race buttons, race switches, even LCD panels can be installed into the wheels. And he has a few stock options to choose from, or you can go the custom route, and he will literally build you just about any kind of wheel that you can imagine, and any variety of options of layouts and things, buttons, whatever configuration, it's all customizable, but it does come at a pretty penny. So let's talk about this one. Now this started out as a carbon fiber shell built for a Delara IndyCar made by MK1 Composites. So Fred Gons sends these over to Max. These go for about $550 on their own before you even start with electronics and all the things to complete the wheel. From there, Sam Maxwell takes over and he does the layout of the buttons. Now, before I get too deep into this, I definitely want to thank one of our loyal viewers. Mark Cohn actually sent me his personal wheel. This came directly from Sam Maxwell right to the Sim Pit Studios so I could do a full review. It even already is showing a little bit of wear and Mark hasn't even received the wheel yet. So thank you very much. And when we talk about the buttons, and the way they're labeled, we're going to get back to exactly some of Mark's sense of humor, and you'll see he had fun with his custom-built wheel. So back to the topic. Carbon fiber, real carbon fiber, and this isn't light. I mean, it is light, relatively speaking, when you consider how big and bulky the mount is, but it's a very solid shell. This is not like the kind of weak carbon fiber. When you tap on it, it is solid as can be. It then has these rubberized-type grips. They're very, very nice grips. They're very large in shape, and we'll get to some of the dimensions later. You've got a variety of buttons, switches, dials, and anything that you can choose from in any kind of layout and configuration that you want. Now, before we get into too much detail about all the buttons and switches, let's just go over some of the basic dimensions. This wheel is actually full size. It is actually rather large compared to some of the other wheels on the market, coming in at 12 inches or 300 millimeters wide, and it's 8 inches or 200 millimeters tall. Now, while we're covering the dimensions, I'm also going to just real quickly point out, and we're going to come back to that as well, the quick release. But when this thing's all built up, you're looking at a throw distance or from your mount to the face of the rim of four and a half inches or 114 millimeters. So that's something you're going to want to know. And depending on your rig, it may change the, cur the current configuration that you already have. So that gives you the overall shape and size of this whole thing. When I look at these grips, they're also, like I said, they're oversized. They're very ergonomic and they feel really good in my hands. They are rubber, it's not even rubberized. These are hard rubber grips that are really built to last. The grips themselves are one and a half inches or 38 millimeters front to back and one and a quarter inches or 31.75 millimeters wide. And they're about four inches or 102 millimeters tall or the amount of room for your hands. The ergonomic shape is really nice too because it cups my thumb really nicely and it does have another advantage to the way it's rounded on the top that I'll talk about a little bit when I talk about driving with the thing. On top of that, we've got magnetic shifters. Now you've got carbon fiber paddles. They are adjustable in and outward one direction. So right now I could move them out a little bit and they also move up and down one position just a little bit, about an eighth of an inch. You've got about a little bit over a quarter of an inch of travel and a good amount of pressure to make it release. They have that very stiff, they're very rigid, and so is everything about this wheel. When I hold it, no matter how hard I twist on this thing, it is just solid as can be. Same thing for this mount. 
Let's talk about this quick release. This is the Q1R quick release. This thing is comes from Holger Butchfink out of Germany, and it is a really cool locking mechanism. It's fun and easy to put the wheel on. I mean, even without it mounted, just to show you, I just put the wheel down and move the lever. That's it. I mean, some quick releases are so weird to just figure out what position the wheel goes in. They're clunky. I've even had wheels like that didn't want to lock in. This thing, when it's on, it's on. And there is no movement whatsoever from it. It is that easy, a quick release. And, and quite an engineering masterpiece, I will say, the Q1R. And the last thing that I'm going to mention before I move into the buttons and the configurations and the kind of things that you can do with it is let's just talk about the overall weight. Now, I don't have a scale, but just for comparison's sake, anybody who knows like the Fanatic rim, uh, it's quite a bit smaller, but this wheel is actually about the exact same weight. It might even, in fact, be a teeny tiny bit lighter, but they're in about, no, this is lighter. This is lighter than a Fanatic rim and quite a bit larger and absolutely rigid as can be. Uh, it's as rigid as the mount, which is as rigid as a direct drive motor, which is as rigid as your rig. <laughs> so that, that gives you the, the chain down to the weakest link, perhaps. So let's talk about the buttons. Again, this is a custom built rim. So Mark was able to really pick any color combination of buttons any amount of buttons, dials, switches, really pretty much anything that he wanted and in the positions that he wanted as well. So some of them, in his case, are labeled very seriously and things that you would expect. Like if you had a iRacing centric wheel, I'm going to say it because I play all Sims, but if I was going to build a custom layout, I'd probably lean towards some of the menu configurations in iRacing and then keep a lot of it as generic as possible. And Mark did a good job, but he had fun on top of that. So, for example, here is your black box, your, your F1, F2, F3 relative, whatever you want to call it, screens. Here's your increment up and down. Makes perfect sense. Now, in this case, he picked seven of these rotary dials, which are 20 positions left and right. They basically act the same as two buttons, just left is one button, right is the other button. But this is all built to get through a iRacing menu very, very well. And then this button, I believe, is the toggle button to move the little checkbox. He used these yellow groupings here to be volume controls, one for the spotter, one for the public. Same thing up here. He kind of did the same thing with the buttons up here. And again, I believe we have 12 buttons and seven dials and two up and down switches. So these two top ones are basically, this one says, cuss out your crew chief. Well, for me, I just made that talking to my team. This one said, cut out your spotter and cuss out your spotter. And I made that talk to the public. But again, when getting a custom wheel, you can also get custom labels. This one he calls go baby go, a reference to gone in 60 seconds. So that gives you the rundown of what you can kind of do. And again, being custom, you can pick any configuration, any labels that you want. You might want to do different color coding. Um, the only downside is really there isn't a button immediately within reach of my thumb. And when I say immediately, to be fair, so no, when I'm holding this wheel like I want to drive, this top button is completely out of reach. Now, I don't have large hands, but that is a lot of reach for my thumb while driving. Now, when I'm driving on a straightaway, that's not too hard. Reaching over here, sure, that's very normal. All these interior buttons, sure. But when driving, even this blue button is quite a reach for me. I can do it, but I wouldn't want to do it for something that I needed extreme accuracy. It would be hard to use this as the talk button for me if doing it through corners and doing it well. So I would like a button maybe here or here or even up here that was a little bit easier to activate. But other than that, I love the layout of the buttons. I love, I've talked about on button box reviews, I love the ability to have different types of buttons so that you know your brain can process dials do certain things buttons do certain things switches do other things when you think of this some people might look at this layout and think wow that's a lot of buttons i don't know if i even want or need that many buttons the reality is the more you can group the more you can use colors or different types the more your brain is going to remember what each type does after using this for a few 
hours even, it was easy to remember what most of this was doing because it was critical stuff that I used often. Other things, they're clearly labeled. And over time, you're going to learn the entire layout just like a real driver. I mean, this is the kind of layout you might see on an F1 pattern. Now, I know that sounds like a lot of wheel, and that's going to come at a lot of price. You're looking at about $1,500, depending on your final configuration. Again, with it being custom, the amount of certain types of buttons, dials, and switches that you choose or displays can drastically affect that price. But somewhere between the stock wheels that you saw earlier and that price, you get an idea what you're going to be paying for. But look at what you get for the money. Now, when it comes to hardware, the real meat and the potatoes of any review that you're going to do is really what does it do out on track? And I kind of have covered a lot of it because you're just talking about the wheel rim. And I'm not trying to minimize the role of the wheel rim itself, but we're not including pedals, shifters. Well, paddle shifters, yes. Any secondary H-pattern shifters, no, or sequential. But it is just the wheel rim. We're not talking force feedback delivery. We're just talking how does it bolt on and how does it work on track? So starting with that quick release, which we already talked about, it is the quickest, the easiest, the fastest quick release I've ever used. And there is no downside to it. There is no flex in this combination. I was really blown away how much you can identify zero flex when comparing it to anything that has even what feels like minimal flex. So minimal flex might go unnoticed unless you compared it to zero flex. And this was getting to the point when I yanked on this wheel, it again was my rig. And the RS1 is a strong, stout rig. So when I say that moving this moved the rig, it's because it wasn't the wheelbase, it wasn't the mount, it wasn't the rim, the quick release, it was the rig moving. And that is the amount of movement that you saw total. Uh, that was also being delivered through some heavy hitting wheels and a lot of Newton meters behind it, but that's one of the things I wanted to test. Now the other thing, quick release, flex, that's great. How does it feel in your hand? Especially on a wheel like this. On a round wheel, you're talking about holding it, turning it, doing various things. When you're talking about a formula style rim, you're talking about two hand positions and literally not taking your hands off the wheel. These rubber grips, there are a couple of things. I met, gave you the dimensions. But they're big. These are substantial grips. And they are really nice in terms of not only the curvature, but the grippiness of the grips. Now, I run barehanded. I don't wear gloves. I didn't even test them in gloves. But the shape, the comfort, and the amount of grip was beautiful. And the oversized grip just caused a little less fatigue. It took a little time to get used to compared to the wheel I was using before. But it did feel wonderful. The other thing that's nice is, there are times when you are going just a little further than you want to turn with a formula rim. Like, for example, I used this for Wreckfest of all games. Not really made for that type of driving, but when I was getting to about this point, I was actually able to put my hand up here, and this shape actually fit my hand beautifully. And I could actually get a little more leverage on the wheel while turning beyond a typical formula amount of direction. So that made it really nice. The shifters. If you've never used magnetic shifters, it is one of those things that when you go to magnetic shifters and feel this, I call it a positive click. And I can, I'm going to talk about the buttons and I'm going to say positive click again. And I get joked, people joke about my terminology, but I'll explain what I mean. I mean tactile feedback. I mean confirmation that what you've asked for has happened. Magnetic shifters do that. You get that positive click. I can't explain it a better way. Uh, there is a good amount of tension. You're not going to get a lot of missed shifts unless you really hit the button wrong. Carbon fiber shifter paddles are really stiff as well. So it just, when you feel it, everything about this thing just has that over-the-top quality that isn't sim equipment. This is Racing equipment repurposed for sim racing usage. That's the bottom line. That's what you feel when driving. And that stiffness, sure, it adds precision. It adds delivery of force feedback. Any flex, and I don't care what you're talking about. It could be golf clubs. It could be bicycles. Flex is robbing the full delivery of power. And when you have a wheel that's flexing, some of those force feedback effects are being distributed and lost in that flex. So it does change things. But at the same time, it's just a wheel rim. 
There's, there's, <laughs> it is just a wheel rim. It is not going to change the sim. It is not going to change the way you drive for the most part. I already talked about the button layout. I like it in terms of on track. I liked certain buttons being very easy. Uh, you drive a car that has a lot of in-car controls. If you're in like an Indy car at Indy and you're doing weight jacker maybe twice a lap, knowing that you could just up and down this switch, that's a great way to do it. Uh, when you're in iRacing and you're trying to do a pit stop adjustment, being able to use three dials all in close proximity to make those changes, I was making some of the fastest changes of anything compared to a button box that I'm reaching over. Uh, it was comfortable, it was fun to use. The buttons, they're very, very high quality feeling. They too have that positive click. You have that confirmation that you've pressed the button. You, you can't actually even press it and get a false reading. If you feel in here and, and you, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> you hear the click and you feel the click. Same thing with the dials. It's a really good indent. Not too much pressure, but unless you're just like trying to twist, you're not going to get extra clicks. It's, it's one click for the most part. Every once in a while, if you overdo it, you can get two. But you do feel that you went two. You knew it went two. So, at on track, I was delighted. I, to be honest with you, I wish this was my wheel. I wish that I didn't have to right now take this, put it in a box, and send it to Mark because I would love to make this my permanent wheel. It's one of the coolest wheels I've ever used. It looks great. It feels great. It has some real IndyCar mystique that you just, you, you can't argue how cool that is just as the being a racing fan. I like racing memorabilia, using a real life wheel type mentality. I love it. Now in all my driving, there are a couple of things that I didn't mention. And again, this is really intended for a drag drive wheel. And if you are new or using a drag drive wheel, one thing you have to think about is these wheels deliver monster power. And when you're doing monster power, there are a few things to really take into consideration. Number one, you absolutely, a lot of people, myself included, put your thumbs inside of the holes. And getting your hands off the wheel when in a crash in a drag drive wheel, as you've seen, is sometimes very important. And in some wheels, you might even get that trapped feeling. Just the hand grips have you so locked in that your thumbs are stuck in that position. I have all sorts of room. I have a lot of freedom in these grips. And when I talked about their thick, wide grip and the curvature, the thing about it that I love is you just, you get on there and your hands don't want to move. It's like you, you feel this ridge on the top and it's gently just cupping the top of your hand. If you're a little bigger hand, you're going to feel it on the bottom as well. My smaller hands, I'm only going to feel it on one side or the other, but you're just on there. I found my hands were just never moving around. I was always in perfect comfort with it. So if you can get an idea just from the tour, of the wheel, getting to know all the parts. If you can get an idea from my thoughts about it while driving, let me just make sure it's very clear and go through the pros and cons really quick. And obviously, the first pro is it's absolutely gorgeous. Customizable, built to spec, including your own labeling that you want. Very comfortable, large grips. High quality buttons, switches, and dials. Magnetic shifters, strong click. Very rigid wheel, no flex whatsoever. Built for direct drive wheels, will work on any kind of normal car adapter. Authentic, it starts out as a real Dallara blank. The coolest and quickest quick release I've ever used. Large, full-sized wheel. Button box and wheel all in one. And incredible craftsmanship. And now on to the not so good. And this is an area that's a little difficult for me because I don't have a lot negative to say, but at $1,500, which is one of my not so good items, is that it's $1,500. It's expensive. But this is definitely one of those cases of it is what it is. It's a lot of component. This would cost you at least $1,500 out in the racing world market. And actually that would come in cheap. It's not any more expensive than its true competitors that are out there in comparison to it. But again, if I had it, it was mine. I'd love to have it on my rig. 
The other not so good is something that all these wheels seem to be plagued by as well. And I haven't mentioned it yet, but it's the external USB wire. So it is supplied with one of the nicest one of these that I've ever seen with a very, very large USB-B or USB-A. I can't remember what that house shaped one is. Typical printer one, which goes right into the wheel. And then you've got the spiral cord that allows it to spin around if you need. And then a USB that's going to go to an extension because I doubt your computer is this close to your wheel. And then the last thing that I really didn't like about this wheel is there are no buttons really close in range. I'd like at least one button on any wheel that I use that is just right there, easy to press anytime I need. I'd like two buttons minimum in those positions, but that just comes down to your choice. It's something you could have done if you had chosen any of the other options from Sam Maxwell. This is just one of the options that are out there. So let's go to the bottom line. And I think this one's probably been a little more clear than any other video, because I think I've pretty much covered everything in the pros, the not so good, and the bot uh, well, onto the bottom line, but in just my opinions and thoughts, just going through the wheel. But this is exceptional. Uh, when I talked about dr direct drive wheels, people have stepped up to that next level of sim racing already. They are spending a massive amount of wheel money on a wheel base from there. You need a rig strong enough to support it. A wheelbase comes as a wheelbase alone. You still need pedals. You still need monitors, computers, everything. By the time you're the guy building up a rig with a direct drive wheel and all the other things that usually go with the guy who's going to build up a rig with a direct drive wheel. I don't think there are a lot of those guys with just a simple DIY rig and a uh, single screen. I think most of them have stepped up to either high-end DIY rigs or purpose-built rigs, and probably on triple screens or even on VR. But actually, this would be a terrible wheel in VR because you would have far too many buttons to use. But at least they'd be on your wheel. You wouldn't be reaching around looking for a button box. But the bottom line is, again, the performance of the wheel, you, you, you can't argue the lack of flex. The grips are just outstanding. The impressiveness, the heritage, the, the, the craftsmanship, all of these things do make it an exceptional wheel, but I just have to come back to the same fact, which is that it's really overbuilt. I mean, this is built to be in a real car, not in our Sims, and you can do it for less money, but again, it's just that next level stuff. And I think that a lot of the people who are in the real direct drive market, I don't think that's gonna be too much for them, but for everybody not in that world, it's almost an obscenity. I don't think I'd say it much clearer than that. I do love the fact that it's customizable. And so when I use this wheel as an example of what Sam Maxwell does, it's not just this wheel. It's the wheels that he's made because they're the tried and true layouts at semi-affordable pricing. In addition to that, you have the custom ones where you can get away with having something that says, go baby, go, or anything that really that you really want for your specific sim. So I think that tells you everything that I could possibly tell you about this. You can go to sammaxwellcustoms.com, check it out for yourself, send them an email or give them a call if you're interested in one of the custom ones. Otherwise, you'll see a variety of different wheels. I definitely wanna thank Mark Cohn. I can't believe you let this be sent to me to get my dirty hands all over prior to you, but I wanna thank you immensely because it's something that I think the world needed to know about. It's such an exceptional, unique, piece of sim racing art, in my opinion. So that is going to do it. I hope you enjoyed the show. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.